From Port Side of the Virtual Hardwood, it's the NYC Podcast. This is episode number 469. I am Andrew, Andrew in our forum, and Andrew NLSC on Twitter. Joining me as always, my co-host Derek, DP3 in our forum, and also on Twitter at DP3G and DP384. Derek, what's on your mind this week? March Madness. Of course. So we have the NLSC NCAA Basketball 10 Elite 8 Tournament going on right now and i'm going to start this podcast off with bad news for our listeners uh andrew had to drop out of the tournament yeah and he's the only person in the history of me connecting with people on parsec that you know where i hosted where his connection just would randomly fail him and the biggest reason is because andrew lives in australia and australia has terrible internet andrew has the best plan he can possibly get for his area but it still pales in comparison to the plans in most other areas of the world certainly the states yeah (laughs) yeah um so we tried to connect so it was andrew and stildo playing against each other Stildos worked perfect as it normally does, um, but Andrew had way too much lag, um, lag spikes and whatnot. He couldn't even play. So, unfortunately, we had to replace Andrew in the tournament, um, and 707 took his place, and he took the US- UCLA Bruins. And so it was at the top left of the bracket. It was Stildo, 33, friend of the show, versus 707 and still do 33 is using the purdue boil ma- boiler makers and it was a really good back and forth game it was close throughout uh 707 ended up getting the win and kind of avenging his loss uh seven game series loss in the nba jam on fire edition tournament that he had to still do so he got his revenge and he moves on to the final four um before I get into the rest of the tournament updates, I will let you know that while that is sad for Andrew to have to um, bow out of the tournament, him and I are going to be streaming a college slam tournament where him and I play co-op and we're going to be going against the CPU and we're going to play through the in-game tournament option. And that will be the Super NES version. And that's going to be a lot of fun, Andrew. Oh, for sure. A a game that I do own for both PC and uh, Super Nintendo, of course, not released for uh, in PAL regions, as basically all uh, college games weren't back in the day, but uh, with an adapter for the Super Nintendo, it, I can actually play that on original hardware and the PC version, uh, region-free, of course. So, uh, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, of course, based on, for those who don't know, it is a spin-off of the NBA Jam series uh, made by Acclaim, who got the rights to NBA Jam, the name uh, from Midway, and uh, produced that spin-off using the same tech. And uh, Tim Kitzrow's on the call, uh, they uh, Monster Jam is replaced by Mega Dunk on the commentary, so it's got its own commentary as well. It's uh, an interesting game and kind of overlooked. Yeah, uh, I think it screams college basketball, and that's what you want. Like the soundtrack is amazing, the interface is fantastic. Um, there's some weird things with that game where you know you're supposed to be playing with college students, but a bunch of the players in that game have Clyde Drexler's haircut where they're receding. <laughs> so it's like well they didn't really think that one through um but overall there's a good selection of teams there's an, an in-game tournament option that you can just jump right into either solo or co-op and whatnot uh and also or against each other if you want to be each other's opponents uh but andrew and i are going to do that co-op and we're going to stream it and then it's going to go also on the nlsc youtube channel uh so for the top right hand side of the bracket We had um, Brent Lane, who won the College Hoops 2K8 tournament. He's using Wichita State in this one. And he was against Fathom Danny. And we talked about this game on the last show. And Fathom Danny was using Kansas. And Brent ended up – it was one hell of a game. Like, we we had talked about it. There was just a lot of great highlights, a lot of great dunks, um, a highlight that made the top 10 this week where Brent Lane – um, did a step back and the defender fell down and he hit an outside shot um, on that possession. But so the Wichita State moves on. The bottom right hand side of the bracket, it was Mole who was using Wisconsin and he went up against Tecmo Bowl who was using Kentucky. This is Mole's first time uh, in an NLSC 
tournament. Um, I thought he performed incredibly well, especially in the second half, almost made a comeback and won that game. However, Tecmo Bowl moves on with Kentucky. So the only Elite Eight matchup left is King J. Mace using UNC, and he's going to be squaring off with Jay Rowling, 2003, who's using the Florida Gators. But it's been a great tournament so far, and hopefully we'll have it wrapped up before the end of March. For sure. And of course, people having a, a blast with that. We're getting some people tuning into the live streams, obviously, and you can check out the full games on uh, on Derek's YouTube channel and the highlight packages Derek has been putting together for the NLSC YouTube channel. And, and yeah, just a lot of fun all around, which is which is always the case with the NLSC tournaments. And it's always uh, always nice to see. Yeah, and NCAA Basketball 10 is pretty exciting from a gameplay and presentation perspective from like start to finish. Like I may not be playing in this tournament. I decided not to um, because I wanted it to be, you know, more of the community involved and whatnot, but I'm enjoying watching these games. You know, the presentation with Dick Vitale, just the overall ESPN presentation in general, just the really fast paced back and forth college basketball esque style that's being played. Um, At times it looks very realistic. I just love how the crowd's into it, um, how the announcers are into it. It's it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, like Andrew said, all these games are being streamed live on my Deeper 3 YouTube channel. And then I'm putting highlight packages together for the NLSC one. When I do stream the College Slam tournament, that will be on my channel. And with my connection, it has been a problem before. It is the way it goes uh, living in Australia as I do. But I thought we had it, uh, I thought we had a big. I connected with you uh, before I started playing with Stuldo, and we were just playing a quick game just to see what my lag was like, and it was uh, was working quite well. I was timing my shots, and it wasn't uh, it was certainly playable and uh, competitive. But once we got that uh, second person in there, when Stuldo joined, uh, yeah, my uh, my connection uh, let me down, which was uh, unfortunate. But uh, fortunately, uh, seven oh seven was able to step in and uh, enthusiastically take that place. And, and yeah, again, we're always asking about. Uh, We've always got people asking about tournaments and wanting to get get in on the next one. So, yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever have trouble finding uh, participants. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think that the community really enjoys participating, competing, and then also seeing all those highlights go up, right? A lot of these highlights end up in the top 10 plays of the week. Um, you know, people comment on the videos on Twitter and on YouTube. And it's a good feeling to have people, like, watch you play, right? Uh, and watch you compete and say, oh, wow, what a great play. So um, I think there's a lot of positives to participating in the tournaments. And speaking of college games, uh, you put out the prompt this week uh, because college games are on our mind. Uh, March Madness is happening in real life as well. Uh, You put out the prompt asking the community about the college games they played growing up and their memories of the uh, virtual hardwood with the NCAA games. And we we have some. Mine are not as deep as yours because of the, again, the region that I live in and not having those college games until later on. But for me, that's been a blast to get into those games all these years later and discover what I was missing. Growing up, were you a fan of a particular college basketball team? Not really. I mean, I, I guess I'm retroactively a, a North Carolina fan because of MJ, but I, I've never really been into the as into the college game as I have been uh, the NBA or the NBL here in Australia. Okay. So, like we usually do, we'll go over our choices for you know our favorite bas- college basketball games of all time. Um, I I would have to start off with the first college basketball video game I ever played, and that was NCAA basketball for Super Nintendo. And this game just blew us away because of the 3D action, you know, the 3D rotating court. Um, Even though there was no crowd in the game, it was just like a sea of blue. Um, It was the fact that you kind of just like felt you were on the court. It was a different look than what we got from, you know, other games at the time, whether it be like NBA Showdown or NBA Live 95 um, a year or so later. Um, You know, it was just a completely different experience. And that game has a very memorable soundtrack a very memorable introduction with the ball bouncing next to the NCAA basketball wording. And it has really great, you know, presentation and interface and whatnot. Great um, player view screens that show the player stats and what their name and position and everything. And just the action is great. We talked about it before, um, you know, your ability to choose which dunk that you do at the rim. That was like unheard of at the time you know whether you want to do a back slam or uh, a slam it with one hand or do like a 360 or something like that you could choose which dunk that you wanted to do in that game 
we also created a bunch of video game legends on that game. You know, we talked about Hinsey with Boston College, and I showed you video of that of him just jacking up threes. He's the center for that team, but him just jacking up threes from all over the court, like threes from inside, just inside half court, threes that would make Steph Curry and Dame Lillard, you know, jealous. Um, and just knocking them down. Uh, my brother Mark used Boston College, and he used to kill us with Hinsey all the time. Of course, the names in that game are, you know, made up. But they didn't have the license um, for the players. So um, it was easier to create vid- video game legends because of that. But I had my own legends on Georgetown, and that was Naylor at center and Tap. It was my bench center. Um, and we had Larson and Stevens. And, you know, I just I remember all the players in that game and like i when i responded to somebody uh on twitter who said that they chose ncaa basketball as their favorite all time um you know a game is good when you remember all the made-up players exactly (laughs) right yeah you must have spent a lot of time on the game if you remember those players um but i use the reason i asked you your favorite team is back then when um i played that game i was a huge fan of georgetown and the reason was because of alan iverson Right. And um, Island Iverson was my favorite player. And I wanted to make sure that um, I used the team that he played on in, in, in any video game. So I used the Georgetown Hoyas. And um, yeah, but I love that game. Just it, it, it's still it's still fun to play. Like I still revisit it sometimes and it's still fun to play. And the funny thing is, as I said, we didn't get the college games in the PAL regions. They, they weren't licensed to release them outside of the US and Canada but I did play that game growing up. The PAL version is, as I've said before, World League Basketball, replaces all the colleges with fictional teams from around the world in a fictional global basketball league. Of course, the Japanese version, Super Dunk Shot, is a bootleg <laughs> NBA game, as we've said before. We talked about that in some of our favorite uh, team names, the Boston Celeries, the uh, Los Angeles Lasers, and so forth, the Chicago Bills. But the funny thing is, is I always played with the Chicago Breeze in World League Basketball. This is why I call my my team an ultimate team in uh, 2K and Live, the Chicago Breeze, in uh, tribute to that. But the Chicago Breeze actually have the same players as North Carolina, and, and they have blue jerseys. So it's funnily enough, I was actually playing with North Carolina, sort of, in that game. But it absolutely is a classic. The, the use of Mode 7 graphics on the Super Nintendo, just pushing that to the limit, even without the crowd, the sea of blue, you still get that effect. You can hear the crowd and just the, the rotating camera so ahead of its time. It does hold up today. It, it plays uh, quite well. And uh, we've actually revisited a couple of times uh, different versions of that game, including Super Dunk Shot playing, I think, uh, did we play uh, Bills versus uh, Trailers of that one? Or was it... Uh... Right, I mean, it was... Well, when we played when we played Super Dunk Shot, we did um, Jordan versus Bard. That's right, We yeah. actually, up- so we actually uploaded Bills, yeah. that video. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah exactly. Um, and we uploaded that video, if anybody wants to check it out, to the NLSE YouTube. That was a really fun game. It really was fun to revisit that, and I'll happily revisit it again. But that was kind of the only college basketball game that I grew up playing was the, the international version, which wasn't actually a college game but definitely a great game for the the Super Nintendo there. Yeah, so I might dominate this section a little bit as far as um, my experience with college basketball games because I do have a little bit more than you, and that's not your fault either. That's because of your region, right? Um, So Coach K College Basketball is probably second for being my all-time favorite. Um, You could shatter the glass in that game. Uh, The gameplay was basically... NBA Live 96, it used the same engine um, as NBA Live 96 for the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. And it just, it plays well, like the live, uh, like the NBA counterpart. Uh, The soundtrack is excellent. It has, once again, a memorable intro. And it's just, it's it's a great game. The huge selections of te- selection of teams. Um, you also have the ability to use some classic teams like Magic, Magic Johnson's Michigan State team is in there and whatnot. There's not a big selection, but there is a selection. So Coach K College Basketball is probably my second favorite college basketball game of all time. And it's interesting that they didn't add the backboard chattering to NBA Live around that time because obviously it was possible with the engine, with the tech they had. Uh, but I guess it wasn't really happening in the in the NBA at that time. I mean, uh, how many players uh, broke the backboard in the 90s? Shaq pulled it down. Chris Morris shattered it. But it wasn't really happening as much as in college. Yeah, but I mean, if there was ever a time where you were going to add it to an NBA game, it would have been in the early mid '90s. Right? Oh, for sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because that just doesn't exist anymore. It's a fun gimmick. Yeah, uh, 
Right, exactly. Um, I'd say next is probably College Slam. So we go now to the you know the arcade space, and that's a game that our audience is going to be able to see because we're going to be streaming that tournament on you know my YouTube, and then those highlights are going to go up on the NLC YouTube. But College Slam is just that great, fun, fast-paced, great feeling gameplay that you get from NBA Jam. But it's just college basketball with college with college teams, and um, it's great presentation. I still think that box art, you know, where the basketball is crunching the rim. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the coolest game covers um, for anything, sports or otherwise, it's classic in 90s, video game yeah. history. Classic 90s style, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Really, it is. Yeah, definitely. Um, so College Slam with that NBA Jam gameplay is probably next for me. And of course, College Slam, you can, uh, if you go through and edit all the plays, you can give them uh, custom names and uh, before we get into it because I'm sure we'll touch on it as uh, we talk about some of the other games and later games from uh, both the EA and 2K as well that I've always admired people's dedication to making rosters with all of the names replaced I mean I've worked on some big roster updates big roster mods as have you hundreds of players obviously when you do retro rosters and classic team rosters etc but there are a lot of schools especially in the sim games the sim college games so that takes a long time to replace all the names So get this, though. So College Slam, we loved the fact that you had the option to change the players' names on every team. Like, how cool is that, right? Exactly. That is really cool. And the the ratings. And the ratings, too. Yeah, but you couldn't save save it, though. Yeah. There's no save option. You can on PC, which which is nice. On PC, you can, but on console, when I grew up, you couldn't. Yeah. So we, we were like, crap. Because we wanted to create, like, a whole league, like a, like a fantasy league off of that game with names that we choose and ratings we choose and all of that stuff. But every time you turn the game off on super Nintendo, it reset. (laughs) It's a lot of work to do every time. Yeah. Right. So I guess the cool thing too, though, is with an emulator, if, if maybe I'll do this actually now that, now that we were talking about it, but with an emulator, I could with like, yeah, I could just save state and I could have that, you know, that state save forever. And um, that means my rosters would save. So yeah, that's that's actually a good idea. But yeah, that was my problem with um, with College Slam as far as like the customization aspect for Super Nintendo is every time you turned off the game, your progress was reset. There's a there's a PC game. It came out on Amiga as well. Uh, TV Sports Basketball with again a a fake NBA game basically with uh, fictional player names, and uh, you could actually edit the names in that game as well. But once again it didn't save them, so you turn it off. And even the version that's re-released on Steam as part of the uh, Cinemaware pack of games, that uh, it doesn't have that option to save the, the names anymore. So it's, uh, again, so much work to do every time. So, uh, yeah, but save states, that, that would actually work for us these days. So this reminds me of this game that came out for Sega Genesis, and it was called NCAA Final Four Basketball. And it was made by the publisher's Mindscape. And it had super smooth animations. Gameplay wasn't the worst, but really just it was they just tried to make the animations as smooth as possible. And it did look pretty cool. Um, But it's another game that did have the ability. It gave gave you the ability, excuse me, to add names um, and change change players names. And this is another game where you couldn't save your edits. Um, So, yeah, there was there was quite a few games back then that, you know, were frustrating in that regard. Something I guess we take for granted now with the storage solutions available to us on PC and modern consoles. I say modern consoles, it's been a, a case since, well, since I, I guess the, the PS2 era had the, the memory cards and, and so forth. So it's been a, for over 20 years now we've had that uh, functionality on console. But, but certainly back in the day, the 16-bit era when you some games had that uh, the battery backup and, uh, and so forth. Of course, Nintendo 64 had the memory packs as well. But yeah, <laughs> again, just, just so much work to, uh, to lose. Exactly. Um, so the last one from my childhood, NCAA Final Four 99. This is the one with Paul Pierce on the cover in his Kansas uniform. This game blew me away from like an animation and graphics perspective at the time. I thought the game just really stood out. Quinn Buckner was on commentary, and we still say, like, if we miss a free throw on a video game, at times we'll randomly yell out, Misty! Because that's how he says it on the game. And he says it like pretty much on every missed free throw. Um, 
go back and play it. It's hilarious. Um, but it's very unique commentary from him. It's unlike any other game, in my opinion. Love it or hate it. I, I think some people didn't love it. Um, I think it's very unique, and it brings a certain style and uniqueness to that game. But it had a great selection of teams. It also had that tournament mode you could play. You could play through a whole season on it. Um, yeah, NCAA Final Four 99 for PS1 uh, is probably my fourth favorite college basketball game of all time. And I think we've exhausted all the games that I've played uh, growing up. But uh, I did, as I said, when, as I said before, when I, once I got the PlayStation Three, I was able to finally import some of these games that uh, came out on PS3, uh, which were region free, and uh, and played them at long last. And yeah, as I said I think I mentioned it last week as well. I, I covered NCAA Basketball Ten from EA during the previous season. At the time, we were looking to expand the NLC content. We were still officially the NBA Live Series Center and mostly focusing on live. And the early days of 2K modding was just, were just starting to uh, uh, tip off as well. But I was covering that because I was on the list of assets for uh, for pre- preview assets for the game from EA. They were sending me stuff, so I was also covering it. Might as well, knowing that I wouldn't be able to, <laughs> wouldn't actually be able to play the game when it came out. So it was very rewarding to get my hands on it. Uh, all these years later and, and finally actually play it especially since i've as you know really gotten into live 10 in the past few years as well and that sharing the engine and so much of the tech was uh was really cool and you know what i think if you love the nba version of these games so like nba live 06 right like no matter what if you got your hands on march madness 06 you would enjoy it definitely because you love basketball right it's not just the nba you love basketball you liked going out into your yard and just shooting around right exactly you liked playing in local leagues and all of that stuff like i think if you just have a genuine love for basketball you could get into both the nba and college version and there's definitely a a novelty factor to it because being so familiar with the nba game and then seeing the replacing with all the, the colleges rather all the schools rather than the nba teams and seeing the parts that are familiar but also different adds that real novelty factor to to the games and yeah just just being able to play with fictional players uh, does take me back to world league basketball obviously once again a uh, a regional variant of uh, an ncaa game but there is something about playing with fictional players and as you brought up they really do lend themselves to virtual hardware legends so easily so yeah and you're not focused on oh this player is getting uh, too many assists or this player is scoring too much and you know with live 10 i can always remember chris juhan being too uh, too dominant as a point guard a starting point guard for the knicks and dropping 35 and 15 35 points 15 assists uh, on the regular on 12 minute quarters because of some of the uh, point guard domination issues in that game you didn't have to worry about that with college games or anything with fictional plays for that matter exactly um i think that that reminded me of another game so um dick vitale's awesome baby college basketball mm. um also fictional names in that one so that is probably next on my list it actually might even be more my favorite than ncaa final 499 i have to go back and play both but dick vitale's awesome baby college basketball took the ncaa basketball super nes idea and tried to enhance it a little bit so it's still the 3d rotating court it's still a blue crowd but you actually have like like almost like an outline of a real crowd there in the distance. So they tried to add a little bit to that sea of blue. Um, But of course, Dick Vitale is on the call in NCAA basketball um, for the super NES. They'd, there was no commentary, but they would say things like steal. And that was it. Like when you got a steal or something like that, but Dick Vitale actually adds his commentary to the game. Um, He's all over the menus. Um, Actually, you can even go into the options, I believe, and just choose the different things he says in the game, and the game will say it to you. Like there's like a menu option for Dick Vitale's voice. Like a sound test. So, yeah. Yeah, like a sound test type thing. But I really like that game. We spent a ton of time on Dick Vitale's Awesome Baby College Basketball with my father, actually, at the time. He loved that game. So it was me and Nick and my father constantly playing head-to-head on that game over and over and over again, I want to say for months on end. So that's another one of my favorites from my childhood. And obviously it's ideal if you can both generate names or edit them or just leave them as is as generic players. But uh, given the choice, would you rather play with real rosters, real college rosters, or fictional college rosters? Honestly, I just love playing basketball, good basketball video games. Mm, fair. 
Yeah. Um, like I, to be honest with you, I, I could do either. Uh, I w- let's put it this way. If I find out a, a, a college basketball game doesn't have real players, it's not a turnoff for me. Yeah. Right. Like I'll still put it on the, um, on the, those players on the virtual hardwood. Um, I'll still have fun. I'll still try to use players to their strengths based on their ratings, etc. Um, but yeah, I, I could go either way. It doesn't matter. No, that's fair. And I think I'm pretty much the same that, if somebody else, especially with the, the games that have all of those teams on there, I'd probably, uh, if somebody else is making that roster, happily use that roster. I don't know if I'd have the patience to make that roster myself, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to use uh, fictional players. I think where having real players is a strength for a game is from an education perspective from an edu- for an education purpose. Um, because if you remember correctly, one of the ways we learned about the NBA growing up was through video games definitely yeah you know look you know using the different players um on the virtual hardwood learning their strengths going into the player menus and and sometimes video games like fox sports basketball you know 2000 would have like fun facts about the players so you learned a little bit more about them you know they'd have historical stats for those players you know from before that season when the game was made all of that so i think for for an edu from an educational perspective and a learning perspective and from a promotion perspective, really, for the college game, I think that real players can be helpful in that regard. And, you know, right before we get to the you know community responses, I'll just list NCAA basketball 10 and college hoops 2K8 um, as next in line for my favorites. Uh, I, I think I'd probably prefer NCAA basketball 10 a little bit over college hoops 2K8 because of the right stick dribbling. And because I just like the way the action flows a little bit better. A lot of times college hoops, 2K8, sometimes players just kind of feel like they're a little bit stuck in the mud or moving all at the same at, at the same pace. I just think I prefer the gameplay maybe a little bit better. I'm in the same boat, and uh, I really do enjoy NCAA Basketball 10. I do like college hoops, 2K8, but as I said before, uh, those games of that uh, generation of 2Ks aren't quite as accessible to me because of the lack of rustic dribbling, as you mentioned. But... It's funny, both uh, both college games, both college basketball games from EA and 2K, they really ended on a high with both of their series. They were popular. People loved those games. I mean, look at the reaction to my, to the footage I've been sharing. People are like, this is beautiful. This looks great. You know, I don't hear a lot of negativity surrounding EA Sports handling of the college basketball games that they made. Which brings me to my last point about game, you know, my favorite college basketball games of all time and whatnot. Um, I actually think I prefer March Madness 08 over NCAA Basketball 09. And just the, mainly the reason is because I feel like the gameplay overall is tighter. Hmm. And that's basically the only reason because I think both from a visual perspective are good. Um, March Madness 08 has a problem with a lower frame rate because they hadn't upgraded yet to 60 FPS. So when you play March Madness 08, it the frame rate's just not as good. Yeah, but um, and it, it stands but, out of that on that generation. And of it, lives, sta- yeah. it does. It it does. It stands out. But at the same time, I think I like the gameplay a little bit better on March Madness 08. And of course, NCAA Basketball 09, the whole controversy with the uh, historical teams, and that was what uh, really they really pressed their luck with that. And look, as frustrating as that was, you know. I can't help but side with the players on that one because they really did get robbed of royalties back in the day, college players. I mean, you got to think about something. So, like, Coach K College Basketball, the center on UMass is number 21. He looks like Marcus Cambier as much as he could back then on the court and everything. Like, these players' likenesses were being used in these games and and EA Sports and whatnot and the sponsors and everything were making bank off of this and the players weren't getting a cent. Yeah. And I think that Ed O'Bannon has a point. Everybody involved in that case that's on Ed O'Bannon's side has a point. And um, I think that the the players deserve compensation um, and credit if they were going to be used like that. So I, I, I side with Ed O'Bannon on this. Before we go on, a reminder that the NLSC podcast comes out every week on the NLSC, me-live.com, as well as our YouTube channel. We're also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast apps. If you're listening on any of those apps, we'd greatly appreciate a review. To keep up with the show and everything we're doing with basketball gaming in general, connect with us on social media. On Twitter and Facebook, we are the NLSC. We also have an Instagram, NLSC Basketball, and on YouTube, we're youtube.com slash NBA Live Series Center. 
Once again, visit us at nba-live.com, where in addition to the podcast, you'll also find all of our original content, as well as our forum and modding community. So I guess that's kind of our history with uh, college basketball games, and mine is certainly more recent than yours, and yours is a bit deeper than mine uh, growing up in the States, obviously. But uh, many great responses, as you said, so let's get to them now. Uh, first up, Doug says, loved uh, SNES uh, NCAA basketball. First college basketball game, I remember, and sleek Mode 7 graphics were a game changer. Reason I bought the uh, the Super Nintendo. And, and yeah, once again, that was the first game that came to mind for you, being the, the first game and uh, a game that I enjoyed under a different branding, if you will. And Super Dunk Shot is a fun game as well. But yeah, just for a game released in 1992, that really was pushing the limits of the tech that was available at the time. You know you were really pumped up about a game and impressed with the great, the way a game is marketed or looks, etc. when you center your purchase of a console around that game, right? Because you got to think about it. That's kind of what people did with like Mario, with the Nintendo, right? Absolutely. With the, N- yeah. with the NES is they were like, all right, this game just looks incredibly fun. This is something that we haven't seen before, like a platformer like this and whatnot. Um Mario is the reason I'm going to buy an NES. So that is awesome that his per- his sole reason for getting the Super Nintendo at the time was to get his hands on NCAA basketball. And I agree. I said it before that ro- that rotating court 3D action, you know, the the gameplay overall is just so tight um, and it looks really good on footage. And yeah, I agree. I, I I was blown away at the time about the 3D rotating court, just the 3D action in general, um, just the way the player models looked at everything and all the different dunks at the rim and just that college basketball look that the game had. Um, it screamed college basketball at the time. It screams college basketball today. And um, yeah, I think it's a great game. You know, if we weren't doing the college slam series that uh, we've planned to uh... I'd suggest doing that uh, a series with that. That'd be fun too. But uh, College Slam is, is a game that we haven't really touched on before, so that might be better. Yeah, the games are quicker too. That's too, I think yeah. it's something we could get through before the end of March. Um, however, it doesn't need to be March for us to like play a college basketball game, so we could do the NCAA basketball thing in the future. Oh, definitely, definitely. So Nate, one of the NBA Life 2001 legends, of course, says uh, March Madness 06 is my favorite. Basically a lesser NBA Live 06 gameplay-wise but it was made in the golden age of EA and has a great dynasty mode. And, and yeah, I, I haven't actually played uh, March Madness 06. I've seen some footage. I know we've had some highlights from 06, March Madness 06 in the top 10 various weeks over, since you started, uh, since you, since you brought back the top 10. So yeah, that, that does look pretty good. So VF Baller was the one who was submitting the March Madness 06 highlights. That's right. Yeah. And that's a game that I had actually never played before. And he actually got me pumped to get my hands on it. And it really does just play a lot like NBA live 06, you know, from a controller standpoint and whatnot, but the AI just plays a lot differently than the NBA portion. And that's the cool part about it. It really does feel like more like you're playing college basketball and that you have to move the ball around a bit more and whatnot. The defense will play you different. Um, I think that it's the golden age of NBA live, but I've played both NCAA Basketball 10 and March Madness 06. And from a gameplay perspective, I still prefer NCAA Basketball 10. And I think that that was almost coming into being uh, another golden age of EA Sports, NBA Live, and NCAA games. Definitely. You know, in like in the 2009, 2010 range. Could have been. And unfortunately, <laughs> the, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and unfortunately, they went in the direction of NBA Elite 11. And then at the same time, they had to stop making the the college basketball games because of the Ed O'Bannon lawsuit. And you touched on a very important point there that the college games did play differently to the NBA games, even when they shared tech. And that was important that it, that it didn't just feel like a reskinned NBA game. Exactly. And see, that's why I love NCAA basketball 10. It really does feel like live 10 on the controls, right? Like it's the same tech, but at the same time, when you're playing against the computer or another human, you're seeing uh, you know, different zones, like you're seeing three, two, two, three, one, three, ones, and all of that stuff. And when you're playing the computer, they're switching it up and, and everything, the defense plays you entirely different. And offensively, they're moving the ball more, right? They're doing those per, those perimeter passes, the swing passes, all of that stuff that you don't see as often in the NBA portion. So I always, I'm always impressed when, you know, companies are able to do that. 
With that being said, with all the great mods over the years and even the, the college rosters on uh, console as well are, all, are also a thing. So some people are getting their fix through the NBA games being reskinned and modders still do a great job of uh, working with what they've got. And, and to that point, uh, Teddy Bear the Gamer says, I've been getting my college basketball fix on 2K23. Got a lot of highlights on there as well. And he's been in the top 10, I think, the last four or five weeks with college basketball highlights from NBA 2K23. Teddy Bear the Gamer is not shy when it comes to submitting highlights and sending me them in general. I have a folder titled Teddy Bear that has like 50 or 60 highlights in it that he's sent me over time. And the majority of those highlights actually are from him playing that console college basketball mod um, that somebody made and whatnot. And I think that the highlights look great. His highlight that was in the top 10 this week was from him playing against UNC and that court, that atmosphere looks very, very realistic, looks very lifelike. And um, I always think it's cool when people can do like the NBA to college conversion mods and they look so outstanding. For example, NBA 2K14 for the PC, there's full conversions to college basketball for that game. And not just for like 2022, 2023 seasons and whatnot. They have retro seasons for NBA 2K14 that were made. So you can experience, I don't know, a season from 1996 or 2005 or or 2008 or something like that. So I'm always impressed with that. And not to wander too off topic here, but we have seen some great mods, obviously some great college mods for NBA Live and NBA 2K over the years. And we've seen ones, retro rosters, as you've said, uh, ones that add real college players, but also a few that add fictional players and really emulate that default experience from those games on console. So that's cool, too. I believe that was DeCrispy, right? Yes. BD Hot yeah, Pot, so yes. DeCrispy, modder in the NLSC community, um, loves the, the fictional rosters, the ones that have the fake names um, or the ones that only have numbers and whatnot for the players. And I think that that's just a, such an awesome touch. And I love rosters like that. So Scorpion Soldier Gaming says, uh, I have a soft spot for NCAA Final Four, 03 and 04, even though they didn't have the draft transfer feature that all college 2Ks had. Still upset that only March Madness 04 had the draft transfer feature, while NCAA football always had it for the most part. Out of all the college basketball games I own, NCAA March Madness 99 was the very first NCAA game I've played on PS1. NCAA Final Four 01 was my second played. Favorite by far is a toss-up between March Madness 04, 06, 10, 2K4, 2K7, and 2K8. I know that's a lot, but college games always had a special experience compared to their NBA counterpart, which we just touched upon, and they absolutely do. When they, they, they all seem to have that different feel to the uh, NBA games, which is what made them very special. And uh, that, yeah, that, that ability to transfer players between the college games and the uh, NBA games, as he says, not seen too often, but a really cool idea as well. That's an amazing idea. I also want to point out, he mentioned multiple college basketball games that I have not played before, um, including 2K4. Um, I think he said March Madness 99. I've never actually played that game, I don't believe, before. Um, So he gave me some ideas of games that I'm going to have to check out. I think it was at B-Ball Video Games who was posting some footage from the late 90s, early 2000s March Madness games. And um, I was blown away about how fun the games looked. And I'm going to have to get my hands on those and, and post some footage. And uh, EHS says, Dynasty Mode in College Hoops 2K8, quick pick up and play and CWA B-Ball 10 works well. College Slam has an option that you can edit roster names, found it fun to update rosters and run through a tawny, etc. Yeah, so obviously whenever you had the ability to uh, change those player names, people did it with gusto, but just unfortunate that you would uh, lose those changes in some of those console games. Yeah, I mean, maybe... In the future, we could work on a mod for College Slam for the emulator, for like the Super NES version. You know, we could release that to the community and share the save state file oh, yeah. that we created. Um, so that would be a really cool project to work on. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, again, it's very underrated to kind of create your own experience with these games. I think the one thing that with the NBA games is the superstars are the superstars. You already know who they are. They're going to be overpowered um, in most games and whatnot. You're going to want to go to, to them the majority of the time when you use that team and everything. And you don't have as much of that when you're playing college basketball video games. 
right? You can kind of create your own legends, use who you want. You don't have the stories behind the players and everything. You don't, you don't have all the hype around a superstar or star for a team or anything like that. You can just kind of make it your own experience. And I think that's a huge draw for some people. And, and I even like it. I mean, imagination was such a big part of basketball games in general back then, wasn't it? I mean, we didn't have stories in the franchise or the early career modes. Uh, you would have these fictional plays in certain games. And you and I have talked about uh, printing out stats and doing fake uh, newspaper articles and things that basically were and, and people have ended up doing online with the uh, story topics in the NLC forum. So imagination was a big part of gaming back in the day. And, and of course, sometimes there were details that weren't in the games because of the uh, technological limitations. So uh, there's something to be said for imagination. Yeah, I've, I've talked about it before, probably on a, like 100 episodes ago, where you know, I had my season on Tecmo Super NBA Basketball and I was using the Pistons. So it's the Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Orlando Woolrich, um, Dennis Rodman Pistons. And after each game, I would run upstairs to my bedroom where I had a typewriter and I would type up a fake recap and article about the game that just happened. And I would go into my basketball magazines and cut out maybe a picture of Isaiah Thomas or whatever player I could find in there. And I'd put them on the article and I'd make it look as realistic as possible. And that's the type of stuff we did back then, right? Definitely. That's the, the imagination that ran wild back then. And um, I kind of miss that when it comes to gaming and basketball gaming in general. It's one of the reasons I'm doing a story topic for my 2K14 in my career. Obviously, there are story, there are cutscenes and storyline aspects to that, but being able to, to also embellish that with my own details and, of course, the fictional players that have come into the league, Terry Hansen. Uh, if we do a college roster mode, we, ha- we need to add Terry Hansen to, uh, to Pittsburgh, I think. Oh, 100%. And why? there's no limitations on that. We could do whatever we wanted with it. Exactly. And finally, we have Cortez says Coach K on Sega Genesis for sure and NCAA 10 a close second. And both of those games we've uh, talked about. Uh, I've, I've, I think I might have connected with you once and played Coach K through the uh, emulator. Uh, obviously, didn't have a Genesis growing up. And again, being in a PAL region, it wouldn't have been able to play it anyway. But uh, yeah, obviously, I do love NCAA Basketball 10 and uh, Coach K, again, hold, so many memories for you. It's funny because I'm really appreciating people bringing up coach K as one of their favorite college basketball games of all time, because I always felt like I was on an Island about this game. Like I never heard anybody else really talk about it or anything, but I, it's a game that I always appreciated. And I felt like overall was underrated because I never heard it in college basketball, video game discussions. I, I think that if people out there have not visited coach K college basketball, if they've never played it, um, and you and you know maybe you appreciated the NBA Live '95, NBA Live '96, '97, etc. Gameplay style, cam review, um, all of that stuff. Um, I recommend you know maybe getting your hands on Coach K and giving it a try because it is a lot of fun. And actually, we do have one more response to the prompt you put out about uh, favorite college basketball games uh, from Emoli91 over on the NLSC Discord. A reminder: if you want to get in on the Discord, then there is a link both in the main site and on the forum. Uh, says, uh, only played College Hoops 2K8, but had lots of fun playing career legacy and improving a very small team, which I was just glad to get into March Madness. It was really tough to get players, but felt really rewarding to build a system using the strengths of our few decent recruits. I didn't bother getting those games since they weren't popular in our country. They barely showed the biggest football balls and uh, March Madness, and they weren't popular there. And yeah, obviously, it, being able to import those games and, and whether they're released and where you live in the world is a, a barrier in and of itself. But uh, yeah, that, that's really cool. And I know College Hoops 2K8 uh, the ex from the uh, NLC Thrillho and the NLC team. He is a big fan of College Hoops 2K8. And again, that series went out on such a high. So College Hoops 2K8 was the biggest tournament that I've held for the NLSC. Um, we had 16 people playing it um, from around the world. And the tournament went so well. It was so smooth. The games were so exciting. It's really a testament to how great that game is that all of these years later roughly 15 years later we can hold a tournament with players from around the world and everybody can have a great experience right not one person complained about the gameplay not one person got super frustrated with the game um it it, and it produced such great action um so i think that's just a testament to how good college hoops 2k8 was and still is and how it holds up today absolutely and thank you to everybody for sending in those responses. We love hearing from our listeners each and every week with the prompts that Derek puts out. 
And my final statement here, Derek, is I think this shows that as much as we want that extra game, that extra NBA game in the basketball gaming space, and we talked about wanting to see NBA Live come back, and I, uh, while I'm not as feeling as uh, optimistic as you are these days, I would still love to see it. But I'd also love to see a college basketball game as well, and I think there's definitely interest in that. And if 2K were to, to branch out and bring back college basketball, and obviously there are some hurdles uh, post-lawsuit, but uh, there are if, 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 if the compensation can be worked out, it is something that they can do. And of course, it's much easier to import games from around the world, and consoles being region-free these days, so there's a lot more flexibility there. Yeah, I'd love to see a return to the college basketball, uh, I'd love to see a return of college basketball to the basketball gaming space. No, absolutely. I would be all over a college basketball game if EA Sports released one um, or if 2K Sports released one. Um, Either way, I I think that it would be an incredibly popular game no matter which company released it because people are craving a college basketball title right now in the five on five space. And um, I think that we're going to get one. I think we're going to get one. I don't know if it's going to be 2K that does it first or EA Sports or whatnot, but I think we're going to get one over the next couple of years, and that's going to be super exciting. And we've talked about it before, but it would be a really great way for EA to dip back into the, dip their toe back into the uh, waters of the basketball gaming space because obviously they they are going up against a, a behemoth in NBA 2K, and there's a lot of detail that they have to try and compete with uh, to say nothing of uh, the gameplay of course but if they come back with a college basketball game that's something different that is something you can't get from 2k i mean yes mods of course and uh, custom rosters but as far as having that uh, out of the box uh, college basketball gaming experience it would be something different that would be a huge selling point so it's it's something to consider yeah i mean if they are the first to come back with a college basketball game they can't halfway it like they did the wnba portion of nba live 19 definitely not because what happened what happened the next year with nba 2k nba 2k decided hey we're going to put the wnba in our game and we're going to do it 10 times better exactly so and they did they did it way better than what ea sports did with nba live 19 so they can't get into that situation again where they come back they make a college basketball game and it's not complete it doesn't have the depth that should the game isn't super fun like people wanted it to be and then all of a sudden 2k sports goes oh my god we're we're gonna capitalize on this you know easily and we're gonna release a game a college basketball game that blows ea sports college basketball game out of the water so um and unfortunately that's like the recent history between EA Sports and 2K, you know, the versus history, and we can't have history repeat itself. Definitely not. If EA are going to open the door, they need to stride through it and keep making strides. They can't just open the door and let uh, let 2K just waltz in and uh, and do it better, which, as you say, we've uh, we've seen it happen with so many things. WNBA is a great example, of course. And uh, again, we will be playing College Slam and streaming it. The uh, NCAA Basketball 10 tournament will be ongoing. Uh, great time of the year, obviously, Derek, to be uh, revisiting these college games. It's something we can do at any time of the year because we love playing a variety of basketball games, as our listeners are well aware. But if, if you're going to if you're going to do it, uh, March is a good time, obviously. One hundred percent. I just want to point out too that I did ask a second mailbag question this week, but because it's a loaded question and we got a lot of responses, we're going to carry that over um, to next week's NLSE podcast. That question is what basketball video game have you spent the most time on in your life um we got a lot of great responses to that thank you so much to the community um i know that we're going to get even more responses before the next show um but yeah we're going to save that one for the next podcast that's going to be a lot of fun to talk about definitely tune in for that and yes thank you for all the responses so far and the responses to the question about college basketball games as well once again we really love hearing from you and uh, having you join in the discussion on the nlc podcast with that being said, that has brought us to the end of this week's show. As always, we thank you for tuning in and invite you to join us again next week, either on the NLSC, mb-live.com, our YouTube channel, or your podcast app of choice. In the meantime, please connect with us on social media. That's where you can get in touch with us and stay up to date with all of our content. So Derek, go ahead and plug the handles. Yeah, you can reach me on Twitter at d for 3 g and at d for 3 84 I'm also on YouTube, d for 3 A lot more content going up recently on that channel, so please get at that. Um, and I'm also on the NLSC, d for 3 I am Andrew in the forum and Andrew NLSC on Twitter. The NLSC is on Twitter and Facebook at the NLSC. Our Instagram is NLSC Basketball. We're on YouTube at youtube.com slash NBA Live Series Center. 
And of course, give a look to the NLC itself, mv-live.com, for everything we do for basketball video games. So, thank you once again for tuning in, and until next time, I'm Andrew. And I'm Derek. Go get buckets, everyone. <laughs>